Four cores, eight threads. Can you play Star Citizen on the latest i3 processor? The 12100F, it's all the lake, so it's pretty quick, but let's see how we go. The test setup is the 12100F, a four core, eight thread CPU. It's the latest i3, and obviously a few years ago that would have been an i7, but Intel have had to respond to AMD, and so now an i3 is basically an, an old school i7. It's pretty good. And we've got the 3080 in there as well, and we've got some DDR5 RAM, which, isn't really necessary but that's what i had in the i7 system so that's the test setup all done at 1080p so we can make sure that we're cp bottlenecked and here we go let's look at lawville first where i've done some different testing we've got some different things going on here we've got the i7 and i've put it in a few different configurations the top result there is the i7 basically turned into an i5 so it's got six cores 12 threads no e cores on which potentially is why it's performing slightly better than just the i7 on its own then you've got the next result down under the i7 is the i7 with four cores and eight threads so that is basically emulating an i3 with the i7 but obviously the i7 clocks higher so that's why that's beating out but then really surprisingly the i3 itself the 12100f in lawville is basically the same as the ryzen 5900x which costs so many times more than the i3 so that's an incredible result and as you'll see it doesn't really stay like that. As we go through the rest of the results, I'm going to just give some of my thoughts. I'll come up on the screen. This CPU is amazing. For an i3, which is the lowest real gaming CPU that uh, Intel is selling, you probably not want to get the Pentiums or the Celerons, but this is an incredible chip. And these results are really quite playable and significantly better than older Ryzen CPUs. If you go back to the 2000 series or so, this just having the Elder Lake speed and the IPC and just the fact they're really, really quick CPUs means it can power through this work even only with four cores and hyper-threading. So it's surprising. And for a long time, I've been saying CRG's minimum specs are wrong because they say quad core is the minimum. And you have to now say, well, if you get the newest quad cores, then they're right. This is a great minimum for if you bought this, it's brilliant. But I would say this is not the CPU to buy if you're going for a cheap old lake build. As we saw in those little results, this uplift when you get six cores, 12 threads, when you jump to the i5s is significant. And so really, probably the CPU you really want to go for if you're looking for a cheap old lake build is the 12400F, which costs 50 pounds more, whatever that is in your currency. And again, you get significantly better performance. Basically the same as the i7. Uh, these C old Lake CPUs, as we've been saying for a while now, they're amazing. They're really, really quick. Uh, they they beat the Ryzen 5000 series, and we're going to see AMD respond pretty soon. But for now, these are the ones to go for. And so I would actually, as good as this is, I just don't think if you're buying a new system, you're buying, you have to obviously get a motherboard for Alder Lake. I think if you're spending all that money, you're probably shooting yourself in the foot a little bit if you're getting this i3. You're just le leaving a bit of performance on the table for Star Citizen itself. I just don't see a reason why you get this one and not to spend a little bit more off the i5 because yeah, performance is better. So there you go. There's some thoughts on this one. It is an incredible CPU. It's an incredible thing that a four core, eight thread CPU can perform this well in Star Citizen, but I'd always jump up to the i5 at least. Like, subscribe, join the Discord, send money over the internet to me through the channel membership. And that's enough for this one. I'll see you soon. Bye.